Hello and welcome to another NCADEF video. Today, we are going to continue the series that we started with ECS Serverless. We are going to talk about EKS Serverless, Kubernetes with Firecracker, so EKS Fargate. This is a straight combination and AWS invests a lot to be able to get that up and running. If you remember, ECS was using Firecracker too, but here Firecracker is completely integrated inside EKS. You will see, for example, that every time that we start a pod automatically, EKS will start a new server that is a VN for our Firecracker container. And this VN will be a node in Kubernetes. Firecracker is a technology that made use of KVM. You can latch micro virtual machines in non virtualized environments in milliseconds. And this is the main idea. Every time that you execute a pod, EKS is going to create a micro virtual machine. And inside this micro virtual machine is where the image is going to be started. We will see that later on. With this technique, you only provision what you're going to consume. And in this way, you avoid the classic overprovision and safe costs. But let's start. This is going to be really, really from scratch. The first thing that we're going to do is create our EC2 instance. This instance will be used to deploy later on on the EKS cluster and execute our laboratory. To do that, we first go to EC2 instance, launch instance, choose Amazon AMI, review and launch. And now we choose the key that we prefer for our image that will be used to connect to the instance. After the instance is created, we copy the external IP, go to terminals in our case and create a connection. To create a connection, we only need to give a name IP and we're going to use in this case EC2 user to connect to our SSH key. After that, we can connect and when we are in, let's be root, sudo minus i. To be able to create our search site, we need to install some application. We need to use EKSCTL and kubectl. Let's go to install EKSCTL. To do that, we need to execute the command that you can see on the screen. I have had all those commands in the video description. After EKSCTL is installed, we need to move the binary. Next step, we install kubectl. To do that, we need to execute the next command that you can see on the screen. And as before, you have the complete path in the video description. Now we are going to give permission to give CTL with CS mod and copy the file to bin folder plus set up the bus RC file. The last step is set up our .aws folder. First, we create a folder in the home directory with nkdir.aws and after that, we set up our credential file with the correct values and we set up the config file with the zone that we are going to use. When I create this video, EKS Fargate was only valid in four regions, but now it's going to be valid in many, many other regions. Are you ready? Let's go! Test that EKS CTL is working with EKS CTL's version. And when this is confirmed, we can create a cluster with the command EKS CTL, create cluster minus minus name, ncadef minus minus version 1.14, in this case minus minus Fargate. This command is going to take a while. And what is going to happen here is that AWS will create the EKS cluster serverless for us. As soon as the cluster is created, we will see that there are two nodes, one for the core DNS, used for services discovery, and other for queue proxy. AWS is going to create default profile, but what is that? This is a very important piece here. This default profile is called FP default, and it is going to be connected to the namespace queue system and default. By default, there is no tag. So now, as soon as you create a pod in the namespace default, it's going to be connected to Fargate. But what happens if you create a pod in the namespace? For example, dev. That this pod is going to be in a state, state pending because it's waiting to have an EC2 worker instance. Yes, like that. Everything that is not connected to one namespace in one profile will go to EC2. When we execute before EKCTL, we launch CloudFormation task that is going to create a VPC, subnet, EKS cluster, security group, internet gateway, net gateway, many, many, many other things. Now that everything is installed, we can execute our QCTL command to check that everything is okay. 
if we execute kubectl get pods minus n cube system, we can see that our administrative pod, cube proxy and core DNS, but now let's see the magic. kubectl get nodes minus n cube system, and there are two nodes in a serverless environment. What is that? What I explained before, two firecracker mini virtual machines starting the administrative pods. Now we are going to create a deployment and as a service. This deployment will start a replica set with one pod in the name space default. Remember that this is the name space that is connected to the profile FP default. Our YAML code is creating a deployment with a label app equal EKS demo to be connected later on to the service in the port 8080. Image is a simple Node.js application opening a web server. As you see, we execute with kubectl apply minus f. And after this is executed, and a few seconds later, we can get kubectl get pod minus n default, or see the logs with kubectl logs deployment eks demo minus the default, or check the startup process with kubectl describe pod eks demo minus n default. When the pod is up, our mini virtual machines, Firecracker, will start and we can see with kubectl get node minus n default. Now, let's prove that one pod that is not connected to one n space in a profile won't start a pod unless an easy to instance is up and running. To do that, first we're going to create an n space called dev. kubectl create n space dev. We can modify our app YAML file and where it is EKS demo, we will write EKS demo2 and we will execute kubectl apply minus f apply YAML minus n dev. Even if we wait 30 minutes, our pod is going to be always in a pending state because we don't have an easy to instance as working in our EKS cluster and definite space is not connected to any profile. Now, if we execute kubectl describe deployment EKS demo2 minus n dev, we can see the error. But how to fix that? Let's create a profile connected to our name space dev. Our command is eks create Farket profile minus minus name space dev minus minus cluster and kdev minus minus name fp deployment minus minus region new central. After that, our pod will jump from a pending state to a running. We can get pods with kubectl get pods. And after that, we see the logs with kubectl describe deployment eks demo 2 minus n dev. Now everything is up and running. Next point is simple. We are going to connect to EKS demo container and we are going to check if we can reach the web open in our EKS demo 2 through the service. To do that is simple. We need to connect our EKS demo container. First we check the pod that we have and then we go inside the container with kubectl exec. Now we can check if the DNS is working with nslookup, in this case eks demo2, dev, sbc, cluster local. And after that we can check that the HTTP connection is working with curl. curl HTTP eks demo2 dot dev sbc cluster local 8080. And for sure that this is working. Today, we have seen how to install and set up an EKS cluster with Farcade. We have seen how every pod is connected with a micro virtual machine in Firecracker and how every time we start a pod, a new node appears. This technology really is amazing and I love the way that Kubernetes is connected with AWS. Our next video is going to be super cool. We're going to use ALB ingress controller with Amazon EKS on Fargate, as Bruno Emmer and Nathan Tabor documented in a blog entry in AWS in January 2020. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy. See you next time.